word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want a rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another project video. Okay, yeah, so once again, super thanks for JLC uh, PCB for supporting the channel and providing PCBs for this video. Let's just see exactly what they've sent this time. This time we have a nice little pin. That's really cool. Little robot guy there. Anyway, the main content of this video is obviously the PCBs. And so I ordered up. I was on um, Ally Express, and I saw these tiny little LED displays, and these are pretty neat. They're alphanumeric, and let's see, they're HPDL 1414s. You can see the date code. It's uh, 17th week of 1999, so they're not super old, but they're not very new either, I guess. And these look to be poles. I got these off Ally Express for, I think it was something like maybe a dollar each it ended up being i bought 10 of them and it was about 10 bucks so not really that expensive and i thought it'd be neat to make some kind of display out of them they have a controller on board if you look in the back here there's a like a chip on board sort of thing everything's encapsulated in this plastic but anyway um you basically give it the character data and then the address as to which digit you want it to display and it'll display it's alphanumeric so it's like a starburst style um 14 segment display i believe uh so anyway i designed a board so i can put a whole bunch of them eight in fact so it, it's basically equivalent to a 16 by 2 display holding this upside down the electrons are all going to fall out anyway you can see i got the really nice matte black uh, solder mask have my um logo sort of as a uh a cutout so you could see the silver uh, tinned copper underneath and that looks actually really nice. I love that. So anyway, anyway other than that, my plan is to uh, use pin header sockets basically so I can plug and remove the displays if I ever need to replace some or whatever. And on the back you can see I have three shift registers. So normally um, these displays require, I want to say something like, I think they require it's um, 12 pins total. I believe maybe about 10 pins if you want to um, have blanking control and uh, a lot of other functionality. So in total, you need at least, you know, around 10 pins to control uh, one display. So what I ended up doing is uh, using shift registers. So I have three in series. So that's 24 bi um, bits, basically 24 pins I can control. So all the data are tied together in parallel for all the displays. And so what my um, shift register um, setup does is it selects the correct display it wants to talk to, and then it sends the data, and all the other displays are disabled then. So it can only write to one display at a time. And it does that really fast over serial, such that it just updates, it looks like all at once. And so you can see, even though there's eight displays each one having 12 pins uh, to drive it serially we only need um, here i have what four uh four like digital logic pins and then ground and vcc which is power and all the displays run off five volts and actually on the output enable pin uh, you can use that to pwm uh, dim all the displays so you actually don't need that if you want them at full brightness there's a internal, R1 is an internal, um, it's a pull down resistor, I believe it is. So output enable, I believe is active low. So if you don't hook anything up to it, it'll automatically always be on. And so all the displays will be at full brightness. So you really only need latch, clock, and data. So three pins, you can get away with driving all the displays. So I've written actually a nice little library we're going to assemble one of these. I'm going to do a quick solder up montage. And we're going to run my code and hopefully it works just fine. And there's some extra test point pins I brought out. 
um, that were unused on the last shift registers. So they're available if you wanted to do anything with them, basically. Anyway, I've rambled on uh, for long enough. Let's assemble one of these guys. Okay, so I assembled one, and I found out I made a stupid mistake. I didn't really think about it when I was doing it, but since these displays or poles are a little bit dusty, so I thought, okay, I'll take a Q-tip and quickly wipe all of them off and clean the dust off with some isopropyl alcohol. I didn't really think that um, different plastics are affected by solvents slightly differently. Uh, some plastics IPA will do nothing to. And some, like these, I don't know exactly what they're made of, it actually caused the displays to crack. So if you're going to do this, just wipe them off with a dry cloth, basically. Or if you want to use a tiny bit of water, but don't use a solvent. It basically, I, I'm guessing it seeped into like microscopic cracks that were in the plastic already. And it expanded them. You can see um, it's, it's really a shame. But all the displays do still work. So at least electrically, they're fine. They look kind of meh. Uh, but what I can end up doing is putting a um, putting like a darkened sheet of Perspex or something like that to give me greater contrast, and it'll also cover all the cracks and stuff. But that's sort of a shame, but I'm probably going to end up buying another set of 10 of these guys since they're so cheap anyway. So I can always swap them out. They're on little pin headers, like I said, so perfect. Anyway... Glad thing, at least they still electrically work. So I wrote up a quick uh, test program, including a library that basically takes a string that you provide, like you can write hello world or whatever you want, and it generates these serial control signals uh, to write to each digit in sequence, basically. So let's just fire this up, and there we go. You can see just how quick that was. Bam. Anyway, so I wrote hello world. You kind of have to as a first test. YouTube SGM4306. So yeah, you can see it's actually pretty bright. And it looks kind of more pinkish on camera, but to my eye, it's like a very deep, vibrant red. And it's actually really nice looking. You can kind of see the uh, viewing angle is pretty good if it weren't for the fact that the plastic's all cracked now unfortunately but that's sort of my fault anyway yeah you can see i'm gonna take a look at this probably under the microscope you can kind of see though uh how it's 14 segment um in order it can only do uppercase characters and numbers and su certain symbols uh, but luckily, the internal font map in these displays is ASCII. So most characters that it can display um, are in the, the correct order for ASCII. So you can very easily modify like a print LN statement in order to write to this display, which is great. But yeah, uh, let's see how much current this draws. I left this running for like half an hour when I was programming debugging. And it did kind of get warm, so I'm betting this... Uh, Sucks up quite a bit of current, so give me a sec. I gotta find my um, my USB meter. Okay. I think in the data sheet it says per display is like a hundred milliamps. So let's just see how much uh, is gonna be drawn. 
not all the displays are on and not all segments are on, so it's going to be less than that. Ah, that's not bad. So just under 300 milliamps for most of the display kind of lit. That's actually not that bad at all. But yeah, you can see here, everything works. So this worked out pretty well. Going to have to buy new displays though. I think the cracks are going to bother me. Um, so I can use these other these displays in some other project that isn't so critical. Yeah, I really like the way that this looks and... I could use this to display pretty much anything now. So I am going to provide, obviously, the board schematic and the uh, the firmware as well, the library that I wrote. So if you guys ever want to use these displays and you configure them in the same way or you use this board as is, uh, you can use my library and just write full strings to display and it'll just work. Last thing before I leave you guys, I want to grab my uh, microscope, my digital microscope, and just zoom in and see number one the cracks uh, just how deep they go as well as um, if I can get some close up of some of these segments lit up okay so here's the display that is uncracked you can see let's line up there we go so you can see the individual like LED segments and the plastic obviously looks just fine just maybe a little grubby but So there's that. Now if we get my display with all the cracks. Let's see. Yeah, you can see there's right about there a fracture. It actually doesn't look as bad when you're zoomed in, ironically enough. Ah, uh, there you go. You can see that crack. Oh, that stinks. Anyway, let's uh, fire this up. Get it in focus. Turn down the uh, onboard light so that you can get a uh, good idea. You can see all the little segments lit up there. Interesting thing. So for the uppercase uh, letters, you can see it uses the kind of the full width. If we go over to the point where it says SJM, um, you can see the number font actually uses only half the uh, the width. So three is half as wide as any of the uppercase letters would have been. So yeah, just an interesting observation. Yeah, but anyway... That's just me rambling on. I just wanted to give you guys a sort of close-up look at how these look. But yeah, it's actually very interesting that it looks much pinker on the camera than to my eyes. It's like a very nice, vibrant, deep red. It's just not showing up on camera very well, well unfortunately. But yeah. Anyway, as I said, um, I'll do a project write-up. I'll link it down below on my hackaday.io page. And if you guys have any questions or you're looking to use these displays in a uh, future project, you know, put them down below what, what I should do with this. Obviously, I could make a clock. That's sort of my go-to, but I feel like I'm making everything into a clock nowadays. So I, I want to think of something else to do with these displays. Maybe I could do a YouTube sub-counter, but uh, YouTube changed the API, so now it'll only display three significant figures and it kind of rounds everything down from there unfortunately so it won't display very accurately but anyway figure something cool to do with this later anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one bye